Will the audience please arise? Friends, family, dearly beloved, we welcome you here this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning for funeral, funeral, funeral services for Jennifer Lee Broadbank Ward. The family prayer was offered by Merrill Broadbank. We'd like to thank family friends for their attendance, whether they be able to join in, per, in person or streaming online. We thank you for your time and for honoring Jennifer and the friendship that you have with the Brock Bank and Ward family. We also like to thank Sister Sherry Labuti and Sister Cindy Dupay for helping bring the spirit through music to our meeting today. We will begin our meeting by singing hymn number 117, Come Unto Jesus after which Brother Mikhail Dietrich will offer our invocation.
Dearest Heavenly Father, our hearts are heavy with grief and gratitude for all those who have come forward and shared their love and support for Jennifer. We're grateful for the opportunity today to gather together and to remember her, to celebrate her life. We ask, Heavenly Father, that thou please bless us with thy spirit, that we might know of thy love for us and for thy children. We ask, Heavenly Father, that thou please bless Bless the Brockbank family and the wards that they will that they will receive comfort that they will know of the great love that we all have for Jennifer. We ask also that that will help us to Remember thee and keep thee in our hearts as we continue to remember the wonderful times that we shared with Jennifer. And we say these things in the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mikkel. We will now be able to be blessed from hearing from Jennifer's sisters. First, we will hear from Sherry Holwig, and then we will hear from Casey Dietrich. Following Casey's remarks, we will have a special musical number by a family friend, some family friends, Jane and Sherry Labuti, entitled softly and tenderly accompanied by Matt Christensen. For those of you that don't know me, I am Jennifer's sister Sherry and I just want to thank you all so much for coming today and I know that Jennifer's truly touched that you're all here to support our family and show your love for her. So thank you, thank you for coming. And I wanna open with a poem called, They Say There Is A Reason, and the author's unknown. They say there is a reason, they say that time will heal, but neither time nor reason will change the way I feel. For no one knows the heartache that lies behind our smiles. No one knows how many times we've broken down and cried. We want to tell you something so there won't be any doubt. You're so wonderful to think of, but so hard to be without. This poem struck me as I sat down to think of all the memories of my sister. She is so wonderful to think of and awfully hard to be without. There is an ache in my heart when I heard she wasn't doing well and put in ICU. I was crushed when I heard the hours were running low and that they had called Jordan and Bob to be by her side. I couldn't breathe when I heard she had passed. Jennifer's my oldest sister, my confidant, my protector, my teacher, sometimes my partner in crime, most of all my friend. I'm going to share some of my fun memories that I have of my sister. Jennifer had a love of reptiles, and she passed that on to Jordan. Through the years, there were many, many caught snakes and lizards. None more infamous than the time our mom was so sick with morning sickness that she couldn't even get out of bed. So, on with the story. Jennifer had caught a water snake near our house, and she had this grand idea that she's going to bring the snake home. Not only does she bring it home, she brings it into the house. And then she goes in my parents' room. She creeps out. So quietly. Right next to my mom. And she held the snake down. 
right in her face. Now I can't remember exactly what Jennifer said, but I'm sure it went something along the lines of, hey mom, look what I have. Well, needless to say, it was a good thing Jennifer could run faster scared than my mom could mad. <coughs> Jennifer was also the one on our family trip to Mesa Verde to try to catch every lizard she laid up eyes upon. Every single one of them. Every single one. Many a lizard lost, it, lost its tail as they got away. That trip, I also learned that lizards can lose their tails. So gross. We used to go to the Bean Museum's reptile show as a family for family home evenings. And Jennifer had, had to hold the big snake every time. And every time my mom would just shudder and remind her to wash her hands, scrub them front and back. And it, which was funny enough is the exact same thing our grandma grew would say. And on our family vacation to Florida, one of the places we visited was Gatorland. And so, as you can guess, Jennifer held the snakes. She even got to hold a baby alligator. And she, she tried the fried alligator, but she didn't, she didn't really like that. We made a lot of good memories on that trip together as a family, and they're memories that we're always going to cherish. Jennifer also loved roller coasters. One, on one of our family trips to California, we hit all the usual parks. One of the parks we went to was Knott's Berry Farm. And yes, we did eat all the funnel cakes. If you've been there, they're delightful. But they had this crazy roller coaster and it's, it was the type that you could hear the screams of all the riders in the parking lot before you came in the park. But we found that roller coaster and rode it three times in a row. And Jennifer had a smile ear to ear all three times. She, she just loved roller coasters. On the last day of this family vacation, we all went to the beach and we played for hours in the ocean and in the sand. Well, I, I'm the, the redheaded child of the family, so I sunburned horribly. The worst sunburn I have ever had in my life. I, it made me sick. It was so bad. And we, we had to make the drive home the following morning. So in our Chevy Astro van with, you know, the red, the red seats and I, I matched. I was very red. Jennifer made sure I had the AC, vent, the AC vents pointed at me and she kept checking on me throughout the ride. And every time we had to hit a rest stop, it was peel myself off the seats and it, it was excruciating, but my sister was there with me every, every time. And the ride got too long to get all the way home, so we ended up stopping in Mesquite. And like I said, I was, I was so sick with that sunburn. And I stayed in the hotel room while everybody else went down to get dinner. And Jennifer came back shortly after everyone had left. And she came up and she stayed with me. And she, she put the aloe on my skin and she just she took care of me. Jennifer is such an amazing, amazing and caring sister. From a young age, Jennifer loved driving. I remember my dad letting Jennifer drive his big Ford truck through the hay field while my dad and the rest of us kids loaded up the baled hay onto the trailer. I'm pretty sure Jennifer couldn't even see over the steering wheel. But she, she drove that truck and she got a taste of driving then, and she never looked back. Since then, her love, is, love of driving has grown and grown. On occasion, before she had her license, she would sneak the car keys and go on a joyride. Mom, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> Jennifer had a love of sports cars and driving fast. She enjoyed entering and attending car shows with Bob and Jordan, Jennifer always had a very strong work ethic. She was a very dedicated employee and made friends easily wherever she was working. For the past 15 years, she's worked at FlowServe. She worked very, very hard and moved her way up in the company, making many friends along the way. She was always willing to go up above and beyond to get the job done well and accurate. She also worked many hours of overtime to make sure that her family was taken care of and had a roof over their heads. 
when Jennifer found out she was pregnant with Jordan, she was so excited. But I was very excited to become an aunt. Finally become an aunt. And as her belly started to grow, just, just barely starting to show, I'd always walk up, saunter up there with my big old smile, and I'd grab her belly and I'd shake it and I'd go, baby, baby, baby. I loved you from day one, Jordan. <laughs> And she'd just roll her eyes. Every time she'd just roll her eyes at me and laugh. Becoming a mom was the greatest thing to ever happen to Jennifer. From day one, she loved Jordan with all her heart and soul. On the back of your programs, you can see a small sampling of the love her and Jordan share for each other. It seems like Jennifer knew her time was drawing short. One of the last text messages we received from Jennifer while she was in the hospital asked us for look, to look after Jordan. Even in her final moments, Jordan's well-being was of the utmost importance to her. Jordan, I know your mom will be with you. She'll always be watching over you, and she'll be there for you in your life's greatest moments. She'll wrap her heavenly arms around you when you're sad, and she'll be beside you when you're scared. Jordan, Remember the happy memories and the love your mom has for you, and be brave as you face your future. Make choices that will make your mom proud, and be the strong, independent she, woman she raised you to be. One last poem that I found meaningful is called Her Journey, author unknown. Don't think of her as gone away, her journey's just begun. Life holds many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days or years. Think of her as wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched for nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved so much. I want to close with letting you all know how much I love my sister. She means so much to me, and her losses felt so deeply in all of our hearts. I know that someday we'll be reunited, and that day will be wonderful. She was such a blessing to my life and the lives of my siblings. She is indeed loved so very much. I think one of the things I'll miss the most is Jennifer's contagious laughter and the way she could slide funny remarks into literally any conversation we had. I really want to thank you all for coming to show your love and support and your kind words and your prayers have really lifted us up during this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't think I can look up at everybody very much. Um, it just it means a lot with how many of you came to show your love for Jennifer um, and Casey, Jennifer's other sister. And I want to start off by sharing why we had um, some gum on the table in the foyer. One of my favorite stories about Jennifer was from when she was small, when she was only about four years old and she was walking with my mom and grandma. They were walking on a busy public sidewalk when she suddenly had fallen behind. As they turned around, they saw Jennifer on all fours on the ground trying to bite the chewed up gum off the sidewalk. <laughs> we would always tease and remind her how disgusting that was. We were never gonna let her forget. I can't look at a pack of gum and not think about her. She always had gum with her, in her purse, in her desk, and in her car. Jennifer was 10 years older than me. Growing up with her as an older sister was magical. Looking back now, I realize how truly blessed I was to grow up with such a special big sister. I always felt included. From letting me tag along and drag my towel with her to sunbathe with her and her friends in the backyard, 
to all the special activities she did with me. Nothing was as cool as having a fun older sister that would drive my friends and I around. We had many trips to the gas station where we would fill up on treats, many Saturday morning runs to pick up breakfast at McDonald's, and more trips to the dollar store than I can count. Jennifer had a gift for fantastic hairstyles. Some of my most favorite pictures from grade school where my hair looked amazing, and you can tell that that style used half a can of hairspray were all her. I can still remember the love I felt sitting in the bathroom while she would style and spray and style and spray. From all of her many big and small acts of kindness, I knew that she was there and that she loved me. Jennifer's life was full of service. If I needed a ride anywhere, she was there. Emergency ride to the airport, she was there. Realizing that I, my driver's license expired and I needed a ride to renew it, she was there. No questions asked and always with a smile. She was always willing and always there. And she could be any Google Maps estimated time of arrival. There was more than one occasion where as a young married couple with small children, that money was tight and there wasn't much left for groceries. When she found out that we were struggling, she immediately showed up with groceries and candy for the kids and wanting to know how else she could help. Jennifer would give a loving rebuke where she would scold me for not coming to her and not letting her know that we had needed help. She was always there and always finding a way to make you feel loved. Jennifer was thoughtful in all of her actions and she was the very best at picking out presents. Our grandmother loved hummingbirds, and because of that, they have always been one of our favorite things and have always been very special to us. Every birthday, she would search and search and find such neat things with hummingbirds on them for me. She put so much thought into everything she did for others. Jennifer had a love for family history. She would spend hours on family search and relative finder she loved reading stories about our ancestors and adding pictures to the family pages of loved ones that had passed away. Her enthusiasm for it was contagious. I loved sitting with her and going through our family albums and having her tell me stories about our grandparents that I had never heard. Anytime she found something new, she would call so excited and eager to share what she had learned. Family was so important to her. Jennifer loved others with her whole heart. You could just feel it being around her. Her laugh was infectious and she had a mischievous side, especially when helping her nieces and nephews get into trouble. But there was nothing in the whole world more important to Jennifer than Jordan, her daughter. Getting to be a, become a mom was her greatest joy. She loved to tell others about Jordan and all her talents. Jordan, I know your mom will always be close and watch over you. As I was searching for comfort after Jennifer's passing, I happened to pass by a book about one of my favorite primary songs at the store, God Gave Us Families by Matthew Neely. Once home with my book, I sat flipping through the pages and was immediately struck with the message in the back of the book. It talks about the importance of families. Heavenly Father knew we would have the greatest joy if we came to earth as part of a family, and he showed his love for us by making that part of his plan. In fact, it is the central part of his plan which means that all other parts of the plan depend on the family. He even made it possible for us to live with our families forever, even after we have finished our time on earth. In other words, families have existed forever and they will continue to exist forever. 
I am thankful that I was blessed with Jennifer as my sister. Jennifer was one of my biggest cheerleaders through success and always there to lift me up through disappointments. I'm thankful for Heavenly Father's plan and the family he gave me. The last line of the primary song reads, God gave us families to help us become who he wants us to be. This is how he shares his love for the family is of God. I would not have grown into the person I am today without Jennifer's presence throughout my life. And I look forward to the day when I will get to see her again. We have received such an outpouring of love and support. And I want to thank everyone for all their prayers through this challenging time. It has meant so much to hear your stories and memories and love that you shared for Jennifer. She really has touched all of our lives. Thank you so much. Jesus is 
Thank you. We will now be blessed to hear from a family friend and neighbor for many, many years, Sister Tammy Harris. Following Sister Harris, it will be my blessing and opportunity to speak and address you. In September of 1981, we met the Brockbank family. Randy and I had been married a few months and we moved into their ward in downtown Provo. Jennifer was four, Brent was three, and Sherry was just a brand new baby. Casey and Justin had not made their Duke debut yet. They were the cutest of families and Jennifer especially caught my attention. She was adorable. <laughs> She had long dark hair that her mom would fix so cute and curl. And she had this little red and white dress that was my favorite that she would wear to church sometimes and it just looked so cute on her. It was obvious that her best buddy was her brother Brent. Both she and Brent adored their baby sister Sherry. I remember going to the Brockbank home and seeing the beautiful banners Leanne would create for special occasions. One in particular that came to mind is when it was Jennifer's eighth birthday. A large banner was strung across their living room. There were helium balloons, and little Jennifer was all smiles and eyes. The Brockbank girls have the most beautiful eyes. As I wished her a happy birthday, who was right beside her? Jennifer's sidekick, Brent. A year later, we moved from that neighborhood here to Harbor Park. We missed our association with the Brockbanks, and imagine our delight when two years later, Marilyn Ann and their family moved in right next door. This time Jennifer was 11 and Casey had joined the family and Justin would join the family in a couple more years. What a joy it has been to know them through the decades. When Jennifer was 13, Randy became her bishop. He got a kick out of it when she would refer to him not as bishop, not as Bishop Harris, but Randy. She wasn't being disrespectful. She'd known him most of her life by that name and he was just regular old next door neighbor Randy. And Jennifer loved her family, practical jokes, gum, especially bubble gum and BYU. Just kidding, she wasn't a BYU fan, but as I was preparing for this talk, I thought she might get, get a kick out of me mentioning that she was. And Jennifer was so kind to our children and was the big sister our daughter Jody never had. She was smart, fun, funny, a tease, and as mentioned, a practical joker. Though I must say, Brent was her match. And we have stories. Here's a quote from Jody, though. Once Jennifer got her license, she drove me and Casey around to the mall or to the movies, or sometimes just to drive us around while we listened to music. She knew it was so much fun for us and made us feel happy and cool, and she was so nice to do it. Jennifer was one of my young women, and I remember her working hard on her Young Womanhood Recognition Award. I would enjoy our talks and time together in class, projects, and activities. Our time together was relaxed and fun, and perhaps that was because Jennifer knew I'd loved her since she was tiny. Speaking of tiny, when Jennifer had Jordan, she was so happy and excited for us to meet her. She had her mom let me and my girls know that Jordan had been born and asked if we could come and see them. Together, we all visited Jennifer and Jordan in the hospital, I rem remember walking into the room and Jennifer was beaming. She held Jordan out to us, kind of like this, <laughs> and showed us every darling feature from her cutest nose to her tiny toes. She loved Jordan so much and called her tiny. She looked at Jordan with nothing but love. Jordan was a tiny piece of heaven for her. Jennifer had the blessing of knowing and being loved by two sets of grandparents. I imagine a joyful reunion there, even though we have felt such a loss here. Elder Holland has said, how joyful it must be for that person. Other loved ones and the Lord himself to have a joyful reunion beyond the veil. Jennifer had a testimony of her Savior Jesus Christ in the gospel, which I believe has only grown since she passed through the veil. She had a love for temples and took Jordan to the Payson Temple open house where their picture was taken together. In the book, One Breath at a Time, Gabrielle Shayozawa describes the depth of her heartache when her young father died. She was about the same age Jordan is now at the time of his passing. 
In the chapter titled, What They Didn't Tell You, she says, quote, here is what they don't tell you about grief. It doesn't get easier. You don't stop missing them. It doesn't get any better. But here is what does happen. You get better. If you let it, this be can become the most spiritually sanctifying time of your life. You will be in immense pain, but you can also know immense peace. The two can coexist. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 we read, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are a new creature. We are new creatures. You are experiencing a minute facet of what our Savior suffered through. You think you have been buried, but instead you have been planted. And my dear friend, you are going to bloom. Close quote. Jordan, Bob, and the Brockbank family, I don't know how ministering angels are assigned or if they volunteer or how it all works. I do know that the power of our Savior's atonement, ministering angels can help us bloom through our grief instead of being buried by it. I'm certain that Jennifer is closer than we know. Uh, Elder Boyd K. Packer has said there is no distance in death. On occasions we can see and on more occasions we can feel those who have gone beyond. From the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 35, 37, 38, 39, we read, we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or uh, peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us goes on to say, for I am, neither, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's been my experience in my life that God does give us more than we can handle alone. However, he does not give us more than we can handle with Christ. Broadbank and Ward families, in all things you are loved. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, knows of your pain, your heartache, and loss. He has experienced it. He loves you. He loves your Jennifer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Beautiful. We've been blessed and, and borne witness of the love that the family and friends have shared and felt for Jennifer and her example and her experiences throughout life. I love the Broadbank family. I've known them since the moment I moved into this ward 15 years ago. And the joy that it has been to see each of their kids raise their families. It truly gives us an eternal perspective to see those around us grow, whether it be spiritually, physically, or emotionally. That gives us that eternal perspective which provides peace, which passeth all understanding. Life does not begin with birth, nor does it end with death. Prior to our birth, we dwelled as spirit children with our Heavenly Father. There we were eagerly anticipating the possibility of coming to church and obtain, of coming to earth and obtaining a physical body. Knowing we wanted the risks of mortality, which would allow the exercise of agency and accountability this life was to become a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God. But we regarded the returning home as the best part of that long-awaited trip, just as we do now. Before embarking on any journey, we like to have some assurance of a round-trip ticket, returning from earth to life in our heavenly home 
requires passage through and not around the doors of death. We were born to die and we die to live, 2 Corinthians 6, 9. And as seedlings of God, we barely blossom on earth. We fully flower in heaven. King Solomon was said to have written that there is a time and a place for everything and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. But scriptures teach us that death is essential to happiness. Now behold, it was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from the temporal death, for that would destroy the great plan of happiness, as we read in Alma 42. But our limited perspective would be enlarged if we would witness the reunion on the other side of the veil. When doors of death opened to those returning home, such was the vis vision of the, of the psalmist who wrote, Precious is the sight of the Lord in the death of his saints. Psalms 116.15 Mortality, temporal as it is, is terminated by those doors of death. Questions then come to searching minds of those left behind. Where is my loved one now? What happens after death? While many questions cannot be fully answered with available knowledge, much is known and much is received through revelation and through guidance. We learn of paradise and we hope for paradise. And that's the first station of post-mortal life. Alma wrote concerning the state of souls between death and resurrection, behold, it is made known unto me that the spirits of all men, all as soon as they are departed from mortal body are taken home to that God who gave them life. The spirits of those who are righteous are received into the state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, Alma 40. Some say that nothing is as permanent as death, but not so. The grip of physical death is temporary. It began with the fall of Adam and it ended with the atonement of Jesus Christ. The waiting period in paradise is temporary too. It ends with the resurrection. From the Book of Mormon we learn that the paradise of God must deliver up the spirits of the righteous and the grave deliver up the body of the righteous. And the spirit and the body is restored to itself again. And all men become incorruptible, immor immortal, and they are all living souls. The Lord who created, created us is in the first place surely has power to do it again. The same necessary elements now in our body will be available. The same feelings, the same emotions, the same lessons learned. And those experiences that carry us will be in the forefront of our mind. Loving relationships continue beyond the doors of death and judgment. Family ties endure beyond because of ceilings of the, in the temple. Their importance cannot be overstated. It is called upon each of us to enable the atonement of the Savior Jesus Christ. And this is the way. Thus it is given unto us to continue to find ways to be like him, feel of his love that he gives unto us unconditionally. And this gives us a snapshot, a portrait of eternal life. Meanwhile, as we tarry here, there are a few precious moments that, re that help us to prepare to meet God. Unfinished business is our worst business. Perpetual procrastination must yield to, to perception preparation. Today, we have a little more time to bless others, to be kinder, and to share our preparation with each other. Be compassionate, quicker to think, and slower to scold, more generous in sharing, more gracious in caring. 
then when our time comes to pass through the doors of death, we can say as Paul did, the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight and I have finished my course and I have kept the faith, 2 Timothy. We need to look upon the death, upon death, sorry, we need not to look upon death as an enemy. We fully understand with that with preparation, faith surplants fear. Hope displaces despair. And the Lord said, fear not even unto death, for in this world your joy is not full, but in me your joy is full. DNC 101. He bestowed this gift, peace. Peace I, live, I leave with you, and peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, but as I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14. I witness of Jesus Christ. I testify that he lives. I testify that the veil of death is very thin. I testify that though Jennifer has stepped into the other room, I know by personal experience is too sacred to relate that those who have gone before us are not strangers. To us and to you, our loved ones may be just as close as the next room, separated only by those doors of death. I reiterate that with that assurance, brothers and sisters, love life. Cherish each moment as a blessing from God. Live it well, even to your loftiest potential. Then the anticipation of death shall not hold you hostage. With the help of the Lord, your deeds and desires will qualify you to receive everlasting joy, glory, a joyous reunion with those past, immortality and eternal life. For this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 293, Each Life That Touches Ours for Good, after which Uncle Reed Grew will give our benediction.
our eternal Heavenly Father. We are so grateful for this beautiful day that we have come to hear the many great experiences that Jennifer has had over her brief time here on earth. And we pray, Father in heaven, that thou will accept her spirit as it comes into thy holy house on high. Please guide her and help her. Please bless her parents, her siblings, and all those that come into contact with her. We command the Father in heaven to take forth this person into thy fold that we might be reacquainted with her in the, in the future. We thank the Father in heaven for thy many, many, many blessings that we enjoy here on earth. And we pray that that will comfort and bless the, the We'll bless the Brockbank, Brockbank family in the future that they will look forward to this re reconciliation. We thank thee for the many, many blessings, Father in heaven, that we enjoy each and every day. And we thank thee for them. And we end this service that has been held for Jennifer Lee Brockbank that she might always be remembered by thee and by the, the people that have attended this funeral today. And we do these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. At this time, we'd like to recognize the pallbearers, if they will please stand and exit to meet right outside this door here. Will the audience please stand? place in the Provo City Cemetery. 